Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today, we're going to be recreating the Duna Orion Drive ship from the KSB-2 trailer. The parts to make this kind of spacecraft never came to KSB-2 before it got cancelled. So, I'm going to be making it in KSP-1 using some really awesome stock-alike part mods. This is the footage that we're working with from the release trailer. It's a Duna mission with what looks like an Orion Drive, which is an actual historical rocket concept that uses nuclear bombs exploding behind a pusher plate to accelerate the spacecraft to super high speed that would allow us to explore the solar system in a matter of weeks or months. And this is what I came up with. I usually don't do building time lapses because it takes me a few hours to build and test these spacecraft, so I'll just thoroughly break it down for you guys. Starting with the interplanetary craft, we have the main Orion engine, which is being fueled by these nuclear pulse magazines that hold the nukes that are going to be detonated behind the pusher plate to accelerate the ship. The amount of nukes that we have on board will allow us to reach Duna in about a month, which is much faster than the traditional Hohmann style trajectories. Next we have this mirror shield, which protects the crude parts of the spacecraft from all the radiation from the nuclear explosions from the engine. Next, we have these spherical fuel tanks and these cargo modules, which aren't gonna be holding anything. They're more cosmetic on my design. They're included in the KSP-2 version, but I don't play with life support, and this engine doesn't actually take liquid hydrogen, so they're kind of just for show. Next, we have the inflatable centrifuge module from the Stock Alike Station Parts Expansion Redux mod. You can spin it up to kind of give your Kerbals a feeling of a quarter gravity. Last, our space plane, which runs on an aerospike engine with a ventral vertical takeoff style engine to help us maintain our lift as we try to land in the low pressure atmosphere of Duna. And that's it for the interplanetary vehicle, which I'm calling the Romulus. And it turns out the Orion Drive and the nuclear magazines are incredibly heavy. Uh, like a ton of tons. So we had to build this giant booster style launch vehicle. I had to upscale the largest fuel tank to a cross section of 11.7 meters to make these engines and fuel tanks much bigger so I can create a larger launch vehicle to get this thing into orbit. We're in the tracking station. We're gonna warp ahead till Kerbin and Duna are at their closest separation because since we're doing kind of a point and shoot style trajectory all the way out to Duna, we want them to be as close as possible to cut down the travel time it takes to get there. All right, so here we are on the launch pad about to lift off. And yeah, this launch vehicle is super huge. It's almost twice the size of the VAB, but it kind of had to be done to get this thing to orbit because the Orion drive is so heavy. We just staged our radial solid rocket boosters and we're cruising on our way up into orbit. We're gonna be aiming for an apoapsis of like around 80 kilometers or so. And then we're gonna be planning our circularization maneuver to get this thing into orbit where we can open up the fairing and get our interplanetary vehicle out from inside. Okay, so we'll detach and shoot a few of our small thermonuclear bombs out to get that booster away. It wasn't probably the safest move, but we can open up our radiators, solar panels, and inflate the centrifuge and get that thing spun up so that we can give our Kerbals a comfortable feeling of a quarter gravity for the month's trip out to Duna. So here in the map view, I'm gonna be trying to spend about a quarter of my Delta V. If you think about it, you spend one quarter to get out, another quarter to slow down, and then another quarter to get back, and then another quarter to slow down back at Kerbin on your way back. So we've just spent about eight kilometers per second of Delta V, or we've planned that we're executing this maneuver now to put us on an intercept trajectory with Duna in a couple of weeks. Another thing that's kind of useful for these kind of point and shoot trajectories is to leave a fair margin of error for your fuel. Like right now I have to do a small course correction maneuver as I didn't quite get the approach that I wanted on my first try, but we're adjusting my flyby to give ourselves a nice periapsis close to the planet where we can start planning our deceleration and capture maneuver on the other side of the trip. And now that we've got everything set up on our cruise all the way out to Duna, I want to give you guys a little tour of the inside of the ship using free IVA, which is a mod that allows you to walk around the interior of your ship in like a first person view. So here we are in kind of the command center of the ship. We'll go through this hatch. This is the centrifuge hub. So if we open up this hatch and climb down the ladder on the inside of the ring, 
you'll have this feeling of gravity from the centrifugal force of the ring's rotation. The crew will try to spend a significant amount of their time in the centrifuge as we have our kind of living quarters in this part of the ring. Those are some like little bunk beds with sleeping bags. And we also have some science laboratories over here, some chalkboards and experiments on the side. And yeah, so that's kind of like our main habitation and workspace. But if we climb back up into the center of the hub, uh, it's a little dark, I don't know why, but if you climb through these hatches here, you'll meet kind of like a four-way intersection. And first up, we have one of our zero-G living quarters or habitation modules. We've got some more bunk beds on the side and some space to hang out. And straight across, or I guess 90 degrees from there, we have our, this is our airlock where we can, you know, pressurize and depressurize for our EVA spacewalks. And one of our hatches here also leads to the re-entry module that's docked to the four-way connector that'll take us through the atmosphere back at Kerbin at the end of our journey. But here we are warping out to Duna. We've just passed about the halfway period and we've entered the sphere of influence 28 days after launch which thanks to our Orion drive is not that long at all. I think I could totally do that trip. There's been people in the space station in real life for like upwards of a year. So it'd be really awesome if we had this kind of technology to take ourselves all the way to Mars in real life. But here we are on our deceleration burn that we've already had plotted out. So we know when to start our burn and we've captured around Duna very nicely. And we can begin our observations of the planet from in orbit, but I have some shots set up to kind of recreate that image from the original KSP-2 trailer. And with the use of these part mods, I think I've done a really good job recreating it. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. So we can prepare to begin our space plane landing on Duna. So we have to lower our periapsis uh, closer to where the beginning of the atmosphere is, which is about 50,000 meters on Duna. And then we can circularize at our periapsis to put ourselves on a nice even orbit. But in the meantime, I want to give you guys like, a, I'll shut up, I'll stop yapping and do a little montage from orbit. Uh, just check out the sights. So I wanted to go on a quick spacewalk to check out the ship from the outside. We're kind of floating past our radiators right now and there's one of our decals uh, using conformal decals. It's an awesome mod that you can add like text to the side of your rocket. And here we are right by the giant pusher plate with that spout that shoots the little nukes out to push the spacecraft. And we'll get back inside the ship and get ready to descend down to the surface in our space plane. So Jeb and Bill are in the space plane. We're leaving Bob in orbit with the mothership and we'll reunite in orbit after our landing, kind of like how the Apollo mission worked. And right now I put us on an intercept trajectory into the atmosphere of Duna. So we're gonna be gliding down in our space plane towards the surface. And because Duna's atmosphere is pretty thin, we're gonna be making use of our ventral vertical engine to give us some extra lift when we're coming in. And we're gonna be using some deployable parachutes, almost like the space shuttle when it landed, so that we can slow down when we're right about to touch down. We've also got our aero brakes deployed to give us some extra drag so that we don't, you know, impact the surface at several hundred meters per second. Uh, it's tough to slow down on these thin atmosphere planets, but we just opened up our ventral engine and lit it up to give us some extra control on our descent. We just broke the Duna sound barrier and we're using that ventral engine to kind of give us some extra lift so we, oh, just barely don't hit the ground there. And uh, yeah, it'll be much easier. We're using also some of our Werner engines, those RCS style engines on the side to maintain control of the spacecraft on our way down. We just opened up our landing parachutes and uh, we're kind of starting to drop out of the sky. So this is where that ventral engine really comes in handy. And we're landing at about 40 meters per second, which is just about as slow as I could get it on Duna. Another issue with Duna and landing space planes is the low gravity. So you might just like hit the ground and then bump off back into the sky and you know lose control and crash but we landed really great when we caddied over to a flat spot here we'll go to our kerbals on the interior of our ship we can see through the windows really nicely at the parallax scatters uh, using free iva as well that's pretty cool but we can check it out from outside too uh, you guys might not know this i mean 
some of my more loyal viewers might know this, but this is only my second mission to a stock planet or moon in Kerbal Space Program. I mostly do modded planets, but Duna is probably my favorite planet in the stock KSP system. Now we've got both our Kerbals out on EVA on the Duna surface, and we'll watch the sunset. Uh, we kind of landed close to the evening side of the planet, so we'll watch the sun go down for those famous blue Duna sunsets. But it looks like we've got a dust storm coming up on us, so yeah, that kind of spoiled the sunset, but we'll get to see this uh, really cool volumetric dust storm up close, which is really cool. This is, of course, added by the True Volumetrics Cloud by Blackrack, which is basically essential at this point for, you know, up-to-date visuals on KSP. Here we are. The sun has risen. It looks like that dust storm lasted all night. And I just love how the sun is filtering through the dust, creating this, like, orange haze. That's a super cool effect. I wish more planets utilized that feature of volumetric clouds. So we planted a flag, and we're getting on our way back up into orbit to reunite with Bob, you know, back in orbit with the mothership, tending house while we were gone. So we're back inside the space plane. We'll get in our seat and wait till the mothership kind of passes overhead. That will kind of help guide our um, ascent. We can set it as our target and then that'll set uh, like a little point on our nav ball that we can follow to kind of align our orbit. And when I take off, I'm opening up that vertical ventral engine to give us some extra lift off as the wings themselves on this space plane don't give a ton of lift in the thinner Duna atmosphere. But we're kind of lined up with our target on the nav ball to rendezvous with the mothership back in orbit, but I gotta, you know, fly out of the atmosphere first. So we're just kind of breaking past 40,000 meters. Uh, the Duna atmosphere starts at like 50,000, but I'm warping ahead to our abwapsis where we can do our circularization burn to put us on a stable orbit. And then in the next few orbits, we're gonna be working on trying to set up a flyby of the mothership. So I'm working on the maneuver node to get those close encounter nodes right on top of each other. We've got like a one kilometer separation. So I'm executing that maneuver now. And then on our next orbit, we should be passing within a kilometer by our mothership. And then we can, you know, point our ship retrograde relative to target and burn off all of our relative velocity and then we will have essentially matched orbits with the mothership and we can continue our rendezvous um i forgot to add these Werner rcs engines on a particular axis of my space plane so it's proved really difficult to dock and we would have to probably leave the space plane behind anyway so that we can have some extra you know weight free weight so that we can you know, get home quicker. So I'm just taking these guys on a spacewalk back into the mothership, but before my last Kerbal gets out, I've turned on that engine to kind of burn retrograde. That thing's gonna, you know, eventually crash into the atmosphere. So we've, uh, we've been good campers. We've picked up after ourselves in a sense. And now we're working on planning our trajectory back to Kerbin. So we're doing much the same thing that we did on the first go around. But since it's taken a month to get out here, uh, Kerbin has actually gotten ahead of Duna in its orbit. So uh, we actually have like maybe double the distance to, to travel again, but we're going to be going about the same speed. So we're spending about eight kilometers per second of Delta V on our escape out of the Duna system. We'll be arriving back at Kerbin in an ETA of just under two months in like 50 days. And we've got our intercept coming up and we're just going to be adjusting that flyby so that we can pass on a nice periapsis to Kerbin where we can set up our capture burn. And we'll warp ahead till it's time to say goodbye to Duna and hello to Kerbin once again after our about three month trip. And here we are back in the sphere of influence of Kerbin. You might see that we just passed Minmus overhead and you can see a little spot on uh, the left side of the screen. That was the MUN, but we've started our deceleration burn around Kerbin and we've captured into a stable orbit. And here we are after a total mission duration of about 84 days in space. 
this ship has been a really comfortable trip, you know, considering some of my other missions, which have taken like decades to the other planets. But, you know, three months is like a really cool doing a summer camp, I guess, for these guys. But we're lowering our periapsis closer to the atmosphere and we're gonna get our Kerbals into the re-entry module that's gonna help take us down into the atmosphere safely and uh, get us back on the ground safe and sound while leaving the ship intact in orbit where it can be possibly refueled for another mission, uh, you know, to one of the other planets. You know, we don't wanna waste all the money that we spent on this thing, but we've got all of our Kerbals transferred into the re-entry module. We're gonna separate from the main ship and use our RCS engines to kind of push away and burn off enough speed that we'll kind of slowly drift back into the atmosphere where we can begin our re-entry phase. And yeah, we're on the final stretch for this mission today. So as we're kind of hurtling through the atmosphere, thanks for watching guys. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you wanna see more KSP videos like this one. And it's about at this point in time that I realized I didn't pack any parachutes on my re-entry module, but that's okay. All of my Kerbals have their own personal parachutes, so I have to get them out of the module real quick and open those up. And the great thing about Kerbal infrastructure is that you can recover a landed vessel or Kerbals on any spot on the entire planet with just the click of a button. So we'll be getting these guys home shortly. But that's about it for today's video, guys. Like I said before, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that. If you want to see more KSP videos like this, thanks for watching, as always, and I'll see you guys next time.